Carol Shelby said, if this doesn't light your fire, well, then nothing will. What's the matter with you anyway? The Shelby Series 1. Where to begin with this one? Well, maybe back in the 1960s. It's no secret that the Series 1 resembles the original Shelby Cobra in design and function, and that was clearly not by chance. Until the Series 1 project, Shelby was in the business of modifying various sport and passenger cars into high-performance versions of their former selves. Carroll Shelby wanted to start with an entirely original design and build a car to his specifications. And that's exactly what happened with the Shelby Series 1. The Shelby Cobra started life as an AC Ace. The GT350 is built off the Mustang platform, and even the Shelby GLHS starts as a lowly Dodge Omni. All cool cars in their own right, but nothing was a total Shelby design from beans to sauce until the Series 1. The concept was simple. Build a lightweight, high-powered, performance touring car with race-inspired technology, but fitted with creature comforts, and do it from a blank slate. Well, for the most part, anyway. These are full of race car technology, from an aluminum chassis to carbon fiber body panels. It's pretty advanced stuff for the late 90s. The Series 1 began with a full aluminum chassis consisting of welded rails and formed sheets, which was heat treated after welding to enhance the rigidity. Floors were a honeycomb aluminum and carbon fiber composite, which was also lightweight and very strong. And back then, automakers were tossing around resonance statistics to articulate chassis stiffness. And the Series 1 was advertised with a high 52 hertz resonance frequency, far more rigid than most other cars. And by comparison, the Buick Riviera had an advertised lower 25 hertz chassis frequency, and that one was a hard top. That stiff aluminum chassis was skinned with a carbon fiber and aluminum body, with styling landing somewhere between the first 427 Cobras and the Dodge Viper. It was a tighter design with a low, wide stance and a severely laid back windshield, but the oval grille opening leaves no doubt to the car's lineage. The rear view is a nod to the Shelby Daytona Coupe with a forward leaning tail and round lights. Rear exiting tailpipes are cleaner than side pipes, so the days of the Shelby snake bite leg burns were over. By this point, Shelby was playing in the GM toy box, and Shelby saw the wisdom in using a few readily available parts, like the forged aluminum control arms and spindles from the Corvette parts bin. Shelby enhanced the suspension with a cool cantilever style coil over shock absorber, complete with remote reservoirs to keep the Series 1 on the level in the turns. It rolled on 18 by 10 and 18 by 12 inch aluminum wheels and Goodyear F1 supercar tires, 265 40s up front and massive 315s out back. Power came from a four liter all aluminum 32 valve V8, also from the GM stash, but this time in the form of an Oldsmobile Aurora L47 V8. The L47 had proven itself in IRL racing and IMSA sports car competition and was more than just a family sedan power plant. The Series 1 version whipped up and advertised 320 horsepower at 6,500 RPM and 290 pound-feet of torque at 5,000. And while those are not staggering power numbers, Shelby utilized a rear-mounted ZF six-speed manual transmission and 422 to one gears in the independent rear, making for zero to 60 times in the mid four second range and quarter mile times in the high 12s. The low 2,651 pound curb weight contributed to the impressive performance. A 450 horsepower supercharged version was optional.
Inside, the Series 1 drew some fire for its plasticky accommodations, again thanks to the key at the GM Parts Warehouse. The dash features a repurposed Pontiac Firebird cluster, AC controls and vents, and the Monsoon audio system. Yep, that's the very same one you could get in your brand new 1998 Chevy Astro van. The seats were comfy, but the setback engine dictates a wide transmission tunnel, so big flat footers have a tight squeeze on the pedals. And unlike a true roadster, a convertible top retracts and hides in the back of the body. The Series 1 feels light and tight and is an absolute blast to whip around on the street or the track. It makes plenty of power for having fun, the brakes are killer, and the suspension is compliant but still holds firm in the turns. But it's not without flaws, but Shelby finally got the car he wanted. The bummer is that the production process was plagued with challenges from federal safety certifications, company ownership changes, and other hiccups, resulting in higher costs and fewer cars produced. The target was 500, and only 249 were built initially, with some continuation cars later sold without factory installed engines to get around some regulations. We're just happy for the opportunity to play with a Series 1 here in the Brothers Collection, as it is a very cool car with some great components, making for a fun ride. Not all Shelby cars age like fine wine. I mean, some are like gold, but others, like those mid-80s Dodge products, eh, maybe not quite as special. Where do you think the Series 1 fits in Shelby history in your book? You can share your thoughts with us in the web comments. And while you're there, push the subscribe button so you don't miss any episodes of Muscle Car of the Week. We'd like to thank the Brothers Collection for letting us play with this one, and we'll see you next time on Muscle Car of the Week.